Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is a standalone expansion for Mindbug, Battlefruit Kingdom. This is a Richard Garfield game, Martin Hegan and Christian Kudal, and this is a battling card game that has a lot of similarities to TCGs like Magic the Gathering. In the game, you're going to get uh, dealt 10 cards, and you're going to draw five of those cards, and you'll battle it out against another player who also has their 10 and drawn five. Basically, the idea of the game is to eliminate your opponent's HP to zero, and the way you do that is to play cards, aka creatures, and attack them directly. There's blocking that's going to happen, and each creature has their own unique effects. I reviewed the Evolution expansion to the game, and this is another one that has a very specific, unique um, type of card that is going to be added to the gameplay. I'll explain the basics of how to set it up and how to play, but I have another video link in the description for how that works. Mainly be talking about the new cards in this, and of course, the new effect. So let's get into how to set it up first. When you pick up the game Mindbug Battlefruit Kingdom, you're going to get a stack of cards here, and you're going to basically shuffle these guys up, and then you'll deal out 10 cards to each player, forming their deck of cards. Uh, you're also going to take three cards from the deck that is not utilized, and give each player three HP. You can set these aside and just note that that's their life. Each player is also going to get two mind bug cards. These will be set face up in front of each player and they're separate from their deck, their hand, and their HP. And then, of course, each player will draw their five cards from their deck of ten. The rest of the cards will not be utilized. You can set it aside that it might be utilized whenever you gain or lose life. You'll take or place back onto that deck. With this new additional expansion, it's going to come with a, the uh, harvest actions. You'll need these little tokens here as you play out your guys. But that's pretty much it for setup. Draw your five from your deck of ten, have your three HP, and then begin play. Playing the game Mindbug is just as simple as setting it up. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to have each player draw a card from the top of the deck and the player who drew the highest number in the top left hand corner of the card is going to be the player who gets to start the game off. The game is going to be played in turns and each turn is going to consist of one action. You have two actions that you can take. Action one is play a card from your hand. Action two is attack with a card on the field. You can never attack with a creature that just came into play unless a keyword states otherwise. When I choose a card from my hand, there's no mana values, there's no resources that you have to pay in order to put these guys out. You'll just simply choose one and put it onto the field. Once you've placed it on the field, you should always check to make sure it doesn't have any specific key terms, keywords, or effects. In this case, when I play my carrot, it is a fast, tough creature, which means that it is fast. So the creature can attack or activate its action as soon as it comes into play. If the opponent uses a mind bug, it may attack you instead. And I can swing with this carrot instantly hitting my opponent. Whenever a player plays out something and then is able to attack at some point, if there's a, no creatures on the opponent's side of the field, the opponent is going to lose an HP and it'll go back to the supply here. And then, of course, I would pass. I played my cleric, it happened to be fast, letting me swing, and now it's my opponent's turn. My opponent can then go ahead and select one of their cards, maybe this Potato the Wise, or Potato, potato Door the Wise, uh, drawing a card because he, uh, drawing a card from his deck because he played a card, and uh, me as well. Whenever you play a card, you get to draw a card. And this thing says that other allied creatures have plus two power, making all the creatures that he plays out from now on a little stronger. On my turn, I can simply play out another card, or instead I can attack with my creature. I will attack with my carrot cleric, in which case, if my opponent blocks, their creature is going to check my creature's number. Whoever has the highest number succeeds, and the other is defeated. Now, in this case here, my 8 would beat the 4, and this creature would go ahead and go into the discard pile. And you just go ahead and put it in that stack of big cards no one's using. And then the pass would happen. If, for instance, this card was actually bigger, then the Carrot Cleric would actually take damage. But mine has a powerful keyword that says tough, which instead of taking damage, it gets turned to the right. And if it ever takes damage again, that, and it can't be defeated, it, it goes to get defeated, it will go actually to be destroyed. Uh, so keywords matter in this game quite a bit. Now it would be my opponent's turn and they can go ahead and play something like this Prime Fungus. And it says while you control no other creatures with power higher than this, this has Frenzy, Hunter, and Poisonous. And each of those are unique keywords. Poisonous lets you instantly kill something regardless of how strong it is. Um, Frenzy is the creature can attack twice each turn. Uh, and then Hunter is when attacking with the creature you may choose an enemy uh, creature which must block it. So he can just simply instantly um, on next turn, I should say, he should be able to attack and he can choose to destroy my carrot cleric. 
Uh, another thing to know too in this game is mind bugs. These are the most important thing in the game actually. This is what the game's all about. When your opponent plays a creature that you would like to take, you can simply play a mind bug. So for instance, if my opponent has playing a creature and it was great, oh, it's another carrot. I really love the carrot. I'm gonna go ahead and spend my mind bug and I can take the carrot to my side of the field. What happens is my opponent will just simply get another turn. So he's gonna skip that play. He'll get to take his draw and he will get to play another card as though he basically gets kind of an extra turn. And the same can be said for me too. If I play out something like my <sighs> Calm Coal, um, then my opponent can play their Mind Bug. And when they do that, they will take my creature. And that has how kind of these cards work. You get a number, you have two of each of these to utilize and determine what creatures are gonna best work for you that your opponents are playing, or combinations can be too, totally deadly to your strategy and utilize them wisely. When an opponent runs out of all their HP markers, the game is over. And there's also some unique effects in the game that will change that allow somebody to win the game actually with the new effect of harvesting. So Mind Bug is a card game that is kind of all inclusive in one single deck, shuffling it up, and you're always going to be dealt a different combination of the uh, many cards in the deck here, and you're gonna get 10 of them, and you'll start with five. And so each game, even with just a small standalone expansion like this, is gonna feel very different and unique to gameplay. And in fact, each of the different mind bug games are going to have their own kind of like, there's a bunch of little standalone expansions that you can either add or shuffle in or separate and play differently, however you kind of choose to want to do the game, but they'll each come with a unique Effect. The last game I played from Mindbug had this kind of evolve effect where one of the monsters will turn into another. And this one has the harvest effect. Now normally the creatures are going to be something like these two that come with the game. This one here is called a Duradillo. I think it's like a Duran, uh, where it has the different keywords. It has the, the number in the top left, which is how strong it is. It's basically attack and defense all in one. And then it has the keywords fast. It can attack as soon as it hits play. Hunter, it can choose and hit or target one creature on your opponent's side of the field. Poisonous, if it hits something, that thing dies. And tough. If this would die, instead it turns over and you'll use it up until it dies again. This one also says that if it's defeated, you'll lose a life. So there's a cost of playing this little guy, even already more so than just the low cost of the uh, power because he just kind of instantly kills creatures. Um, and then things like this, where it's even bigger, it's a huge one. This is a Pomalazillo, <laughs> and it's a nine, but it's just, oh, the only thing it says on it is enemy creatures that have, hunt, have hunter cannot attack. So it stops guys like the Duradillo from targeting this guy and removing him. And usually that's kind of been the, 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 like the basics type of mind bug things. So there's some new things that are added to this game here, like Calm Coal. This is a poisonous creature with a worth one, but it has something called Harvest. In the left-hand middle corner is a harvest symbol and a two. Basically how this works is you'll play this out onto the field and then you will place two markers that you get in this game uh, on the card. At the beginning of your next turn, you'll remove a marker and at the beginning of the next turn after that, you will remove another. And when there are no markers left, you activate the harvest effect. This one here says that you instantly defeat this. So it's not a great harvest effect, but it is a poisonous card and it says other allied creatures cannot be defeated. So it protects your other creatures and allows you to utilize this to block enemies and defeat them instantly. It's a very powerful card, um, even though it kind of goes away at the end of two turns. That's not always the case for harvest. Sometimes though, you'll have something like the Spore Weaver here, which has a three power and it's also poisonous, but it says on its harvest effect after two turns, you can draw any two cards from any player's discard piles. So you can actually get cards back with this wonderful little card here after two turns. So a positive effect and a negative effect, but this is wrapped around a kind of basic card and this is wrapped around a really powerful card. Uh, or talking about uh, powerful cards, there is the Artemis here. The Artemis is a poisonous four power, but it has a harvest of five, which means after you place it down and then five more turns, well, you win the game. Really, really powerful, except for when you note that there are other creatures in the game, like this Bananapus that is a hunter, so it allows you to instantly hit things. It has two harvest symbols on it, and it says you can defeat any enemy creature 
after two turns. So there are a lot of ways to counter creatures like this. There's strong effects, but they take a long time, and there's decent effects that take a short time, and there is a wide variety uh, built into like the type of card it is as well. And we have another one here, an Alluring Oyster. This is a two power poisonous creature, but it has a harvest of, uh, oh sorry, five power poisonous creature. It has a like, two harvest on it. And the harvest is you can take control of a creature with power six or more. So this guy will eventually let you get stronger creatures, but it takes a little bit of time. I like this new mechanic. It really works very well. It feels kind of like a countdown timer utilizing different types of card games I've played before with a unique twist to it, adding the ability to make these countdown timers be really good for you or bad, but give you a good card. And so there's a mix of like different combinations that can be added for these different mind bug critters and their interaction with other cards in the game works well as well. I love all the new different creatures that we have in this game. There are some really great artwork, just as always. I, I've been a big fan of the mind bug artwork. Um, this is probably one of my favorite. It's like the uh, pumpkin, pumpkin head. <laughs> it's called a Tomaget Tomageddon. <laughs> it's a nine power, but when it's defeated, I can steal a random card from my opponent's hand. It's pretty powerful, actually. And power in this game can matter, and it cannot matter, because each of the creature's effects can like change how the game state is played. It can just, you can destroy creatures, there's poisonous, etc., etc. It's a clean game. Uh, just like I've always said before about Mindbug, this is a straightforward game that gets people into TCGs, gets people into understanding keywords. It has a lot of back and forth. It's really fast to set up, really fast to explain, and understand the basics of how games like this work. And this is a game that's travel size, and it's also expansion available. You can add all the different games together if you would like. And uh, you can teach each pe pe person the new rules, the new keywords for each of the different expansions in like maybe 30 seconds. And that is, that, that's the great aspect of this. It's like a TCG all packed into a small card game that is a ton of replayability, beautiful artwork, and unique little add-ons for each of the expansions you want to get. Do you want to have a huge mind bug experience? You buy it all. And then you have all the different uh, pieces to it, all the different standalone expansions and unique keywords. Or if you're just looking to wet your beak a little bit, you can pick up just one and experience the game, experience one unique keyword along with all the basic ones. There's still quite a lot. It's not like it just comes with one. And this one here, there's like three, six, seven, eight, is quite a few. Um, but yeah, get to experience that and, and, and play the game with other people. And then maybe you can get them into the larger ones if you would like. But this works just as well on its own if you just kind of want to get a little taste of the nostalgia of playing Magic the Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon, but you don't want to get all back into that training activity aspect. It's a wonderful game. I love Mindbug. My, Brian loves the game. He does my Instagram and website and whatnot. He's a big fan of this. So this is going to get a stamp of approval as always from me. It's wonderful. Extra little add-ons are great and the Harvest one works really well. It's very powerful, but it's really cool. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Battlefruit Kingdom, a standalone my, mind bug expansion. If you would like, check out website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. There's a link in the description for this guy. Don't forget to check that out, of course. It's uh, being crowdfunded right now. And if you would like, you can also subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button as well. We play live streams on Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games just like this one. And in fact, this might hit our next week's roster and of course you can also go ahead and check out the instagram and website for more wonderful content that's it guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to battling it out with you in mindbug next time